What's up, everybody? Grim Green back here today. Thank you so much for joining me again. I have a thing today. I have a, actually have a billet box thing today. This is Harold. This was the, the first billet box I was gifted on the vape tour from a guy named Harold in 2017, and that's why it's named Harold with some straight up Supply Co panels on it. But the thing is, nothing is in here right now. But I do have a thing from Straight Up Supply Co. called the Kirsch. It is a little Boro bridge. It almost looks like, you know, when you look at this deck, you could kind of fantasize about putting dual coils in here, but at the end of the day, I don't think it would really work. It'd have to be real, real small. But it's just a little flavor banger bridge for the Boro tank. So I have a brand new Boro tank sitting here. I have a Kirsch and I have Harold. And what we're gonna do is get this built and set up right now. And I'm actually gonna treat this Kirsch like I have been treating my pod videos in that today I'm gonna set it up and then I'm gonna continue using it for a few days, week, question mark, and then I'll report back. Let's go. These billet box panels are glow in the dark, so I'm gonna put them right next to my lights here to try to get them the most glowed up as possible. And boosh, here we go. This is the Susco Kirsch. Look at this deck. It's obviously a single coil deck, but you could kind of fantasize about doing some tiny little dual coils in there. At least I did. This sort of top cap chimney part that goes over your bridge is interestingly shaped. It's slightly pyramidal in nature. Boosh, I guess, slightly pyramidal in nature. I kind of have high hopes for this. I'm expecting the Kirsch to kind of bang on flavor. There's the deck. Looks like it's a fixed airflow, restricted lung, a chimney as well. Assuming this goes into here. Yep. Is that really it? Really? What am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? Is this a joke? I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I can't get this cap on. I can see how it's supposed to go on, but it will not go down any further no matter how I do it, and I can't force this. What am I doing wrong? Please forgive my hands, but I need to prove that I'm not crazy. This does not close. I am giving it the force of a man and a gorilla, and I cannot get this to close. Spin it around, it's even worse. God damn it. Oh, not even close. And every time I put it in, it goes crooked. I can't put it on on flat. Son of a bitch, mother fuck. Well, fuck me running. That is difficult. Well, the good news is I used all of my might and I got it closed and snapped together. The bad news is I do not have enough might to get these separated again. I have rubbed my fingers raw trying to get this apart. I don't want to get in there with like tools and pliers and because I don't want to mess this up. But Damn it, I'm gonna keep trying. All right, apparently the Kirsch has like a little bit of a break in period because after I got it initially snapped on and eventually pulled off, I've just been doing that back and forth like a few times, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off repeatedly. And now it seems to be going on and off without much difficult. Without much difficult. Without much difficulty. Okay, now we can get to building. Definitely not on a mech. All right, I got it on the Geek Vape S100 here. You do get a little baggy, it appears, with extra screws, O-rings, and two extra tools. These are so tiny, I'm assuming you have to use them. It's just the way billet box stuff is. You don't like tiny tools, then don't use billet box stuff. <laughs> Now, before I start unscrewing things, I should try to do a coil placement, right? Here's what I have in front of me. It's some twisted Timmy's coils. They say they're a micro-fused Clapton. Looks like you can use them in something like this, like a mouth to lung. Maybe. Okay, so it's supposed to go this way as I'm discovering. Okay, I see. Okay, this could work. That is the very loose placement of how I'm gonna put in this coil. Man, these screws are tiny. All right, well, that was kind of a little bit of a nightmare, not a big deal. This is a two and a half millimeter coil, which I'm hoping fits in here. I'm getting the vibe, it's not gonna fit in here. 13 and a half watts, it's glowing very nice and evenly. This is the moment of truth and... Shit. Wah, wah, wah. So it turns out a two and a half millimeter is a little bit too big for this. That's fine. We can either turn this into a smaller diameter or we can still keep searching. Okay, apologize. I should have shown you that process, but these are some AJ Holland coils that just said BBS. They're billet box stuff. This was a two and a half millimeter coil. I pulled it down to a two millimeter. It's really easy to do. I should have shown you. All you have to really do is get it on your graduated tool. Take one side, grip it really firmly, pull. You kind of end up working it through a little bit, but it's down to a two millimeter. Let's see if a two millimeter works now. I <coughs> have been sitting here 
for one half of one hour trying to get this two millimeter coil in here. It's at 13 watts, it's glowing perfectly, but as soon as I fit test it, disaster. So a two millimeter coil is too big to fit inside the Kirsch. Here's where we're going with this. I'm gonna go build a one millimeter round wire and we're gonna get it in this damn Kirsch. My fantasy of a dual coil drifted away a long time ago and now my fantasy of having a, a fused Clapton in here is drifting away. My fantasy of getting a round wire build in here is even drifting away because I've already stripped out one of the screws and one of the tools. Let's go. All right, this is actual insanity. This is my last hope for any sort of crackle from this. I'm using 22 gauge wire, one and a half millimeters. All right, here's an up. <laughs> well, about eight to 10 minutes have passed and I did get a round wire build in here. Not bad, 22 gauge anarchist, glowing great. Here's the problem I'm running into. 22 gauge wire is too thick and do you see that top left screw just kind of poking out just a little bit? <laughs> that won't let the top cap go on. So it looks like it's back to the drawing board. Maybe I can find some 24 gauge wire somewhere. God, I hope that works. <clears throat> ba -ba -da -ba. 24 gauge wire. Just slowly working down, see what we can get. God damn it, I started accidentally making a stovetop coil. Probably a good thing you can't see my face because I don't know what else to do right now. This is, hang on, this is a one and a half millimeter, 24 gauge round wire build, 0.35 glowing perfectly. Kirsch cap goes on clean, feels like literally zero interference. Bum, 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 bum. Well, I switched it over to a DNA because it just, you know, I wanted to be sure, but it just shorts out every single time. The only thing I can think is that those screws are still sticking out a little bit too far. So I'm going to replace the grub screws or hex key screws with the uh, flathead screws included. This is literally my last ditch effort. I might be giving up on the Kirsch. Good God. This, my friends, is a one and a half millimeter, 24 gauge. I replaced the grub screws with flathead screws. Everything looks perfect right now. It's gonna glow perfectly evenly. It's not touching anything anywhere. There's no screw that's past the housing or anything. This honestly looks flawless to me. But here's what happens when you put the top cap on. Oh, 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 what's that say? Oh, temper checked it? Oh, check atomizer? Oh, okay. What happens if I take this off? Yeah, just as I thought. Perfect. Oh, no, no, no. I don't know what to do. I give up. Literally one solid hour of tinkering just then. And I just, for something that us Americans call for shits and giggles, I just put it in a boro tank just to see. I don't have the glass on it and I didn't wick it and I don't have any liquid in here or anything, but I just wanted to see if I could get a resistance or if it was gonna say atomizer short in a DNA in a billet box. Because for some reason I had it in my head that maybe it was like shorting out on the top of the metal on the mod when I put the cap on and it was meant to be fired inside of a billet box. Saying it out loud, it doesn't actually make much sense at all. I might just edit this and upload it as a video. Asking the question, what am I doing wrong with the Kirsch? I feel like I'm doing literally everything right. It's a tiny little build in there. There's plenty of clearance. When I glow it and then I put the cap on, you can look in there and there's plenty of clearance everywhere. It's not impeding on the coils. All the screws are screwed down. Again, I don't know. Calling all Kirsch professionals what the shit am I doing wrong? This is the most frustrating Boro Bridge I've come across so far. And I promise, Dylan, I'm not trying to do you dirty here, but huh, you, what? So, comes out, I don't know. I don't know what can be done. For a hot minute in there, I thought it could be that my leads were touching the bottom, and so I've raised them both, like I got in there with my magnifying glasses and clipped them and just hovered them and then screwed the screws down. It was a pain in the ass, but I'm making sure that they're not touching the bottom. Like, I feel like I've jumped through literally every hoop and it cannot or will not fire with this cap on, which I had a pain in the ass time getting seated on there in the first place. That is really, truly, and honestly bumming me out in a severe way. And we end where we started with the Kirsch just put away. And here's the thing, I know these are small run batch things and maybe he can't quality check every single one. And I generally like 
sus co for the billet box stuff. That's the part that makes this sting a little bit worse because I really, really wanted to use it. So I guess no matter what's in your hand, it's just a real letdown, you know? I feel like I dedicated my whole day to this and now I don't have anything to vape, but that's okay. Because even without something in my hand to vape, it's still 95% less harmful than burning deadly combustible tobacco cigarettes. So no matter what's in your hand, sometimes even when it's nothing, absolutely let's keep on vaping. <coughs> It's like 10.30 and I'm uh, just gonna smoke, so 